We are so glad that you're here for another episode. Today we have back by popular demand, Colton Strasser. And Colton's going to talk to us uh, about, are you really ready for government grants? And Colton um, is with Colton Strasser Consulting. And we'll hear more directly from you here momentarily. Before that, we want to remind our viewers and our listeners around the globe who we are. So Julia Patrick is here and serves as the CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. I'm Jarrett Ransom, her favorite nonprofit nerd and only, but CEO of the Raven Group. And I like to remind everyone, plenty of nerdiness to go around. So, you know, always a happy to be here in conversation with you, Julia, and with our esteemed guest who, as we always say, we learn so much from every single day, but we couldn't do this without our sponsors. So thank you to our besties over at Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy at National University, Nonprofit Thought Leader, your part-time controller, staffing boutique, nonprofit nerd, as well as nonprofit tech talk. These companies keep us going and growing, but they're here. Yes, round of applause. They're here for you. They're here for your mission, and they're here to, to better support your community. So do us a favor, do yourself a favor, but do them a favor and check out these companies. Um, they are they are truly amazing. And um, actually, Colton and I had a sidebar the other day when we were on a chat about your part time controller. So that was that was fun. Yeah, good. So we um, we've produced nearly 800 episodes. You can find us on, you know, streaming for broadcast. You can find us on podcast if you're auditory and want to listen to us uh, that way. And you can also now download the app. Thank you, Vanna White, who is showing us her her phone. Julia, thank you for that. Yeah, d- make sure you download the app. Um, it's on both uh, all smartphones, but Droid as well as iPhone. And it will, of course, give you that notification each and every day, including today, letting you know that Colton's episode is now up and on the app. So uh, plenty of places you can find us. And again, for today's conversation, I'm just so glad to have you back, Colton. Again, those of you watching and listening, Colton Strasser, CEO at Colton Strasser Consulting, joins us from the big state of Texas. Welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me back. It's exciting to talk about government grants and the good, the bad, and the somewhat ugly. <laughs> Well, tell us a little bit, Colton, uh, I know what you do, but tell those that are watching and listening that might not be familiar with you and your work, really where your niche market is. Yeah, so at Colton Strasser Consulting, we help nonprofits develop the data, funding, and leadership skills necessary to create change. And in terms of the funding aspect, um, I am a former fundraiser. I still do some of that. I got my CFRE. I'm an AFP master trainer. Um, But my niche is government grants. Um, And as I say, it's government grants only, nothing more, nothing less. Uh, And so uh, I can do all the other stuff. But, you know, having a PhD comes in handy every once in a while. And when reading 48 pages of instructions for a government grant, uh, my attention span can hold on for that long. So, uh, you know, that's kind of the niche I found. It's, you know, I'll probably talk more about this, but grant writing for foundations and other writing for philanthropy is often persuasive and creative writing kind of blended together. Mm -hmm. Government grant writing is technical writing. Um, It's very straightforward. They don't care about the love, like squeeze all that out of your application. It doesn't belong there. Uh, You can use that creativity somewhere else, but um, it's a lot of technical writing, which is what I really um, enjoy doing. Uh, And so that's kind of how I wound it up uh, doing government grants for different nonprofits, and we're at 25 million and counting. So. Uh, Congratulations! Yeah, that's really cool. I love that you started it as started us off with technical versus emotional writing mm-hmm. um, and persuasive writing. Really interesting because to me, Colton, that frames up so much of what we're going to talk about with. Uh, with you today. And the first thing we got to ask, and this is like, start here before we go anywhere else, are government grants plentiful? I mean, I feel like sometimes it's like we, you know, the government saying we need more people to apply. And then other times I'm like, I hear, it seems like I hear you'll never get one. So (laughs) where, where are we in between this, that, in that spectrum, on that spectrum? 
Well, you're correct in that it's a spectrum. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of funding for certain things and not so much others. Um, and I always say, is it worth jumping through a flaming hoop or is there a better way to get money? Um, to answer the question, if it's plentiful, you know, as the academic, I had to bring you some data fresh off the presses. So um, I did some analysis last night of all the nonprofits in the state of Texas. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, revenue that's, you know, sort of your philanthropic or your contributed revenue. So philanthropy makes up 48.7% of that revenue. Government grants makes up 40.1% of that revenue. So it's very interesting. A big nugget of the overall revenue. Now, then to share some more data, philanthropic contributions make up 21% of you know, a certain chunk of revenue, while program service revenue, the things we charge for, uh, make up 79%. So, you know, when I tell nonprofits that come in to me and say, hey, I want more money. And I'm like, OK, well, what's fundraising looking like? They're like, well, we're doing fine. I'm like, well, have you looked at government grants and have you looked at charging for something yet? And they're like, oh, no, we haven't considered that. And I'm like, yeah, that's where your money's sitting. Uh, you know, there's there's ways nonprofits can do that. But um, the short answer to your very short question is, yes, they are plentiful, but government grants aren't for everyone. They're kind of like bangs. Not everyone can rock a bang. So, you know, <laughs> like, government grants just aren't for everyone. Uh, so it's just, uh, it's it, they're good, but, you know, there there's, uh, some people love government grants. Some people love to hate them. Um, you know, they're, they're also time bound. So you have three to five years to maybe figure it out. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, before we started, we talked about, we, you know, Jared and, you know, Julia, you were talking about some, you know, nonprofits that you've worked with that got grants and they're like, woo, we grew. Mm -hmm. And I was talking about this morning uh, with a potential client and they're like, yeah, we have about two more years before that runway just stops. Mm -hmm. um, and so sustainability is a huge thing when talking about government grants as well. Yeah. You, spot on, right? Like that yeah. runway, there is, they are time bound. And so if we grow as an organization, what does that look like for future, you know, and how do we equate that in our budget? How do we equate that within our workforce? There's a lot of moving pieces to this. Um, but I know who I'm going to call the next time I need to read a dissertation. It's going to be you, Colton, because I don't have that energy or the attention like to sit down and read those details. Um, but technical writing. And so I love that you're like, you know, all that creativity, all the fluff, all the love, set that aside. That can be used elsewhere. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's just such an amazing lens to start with, because I know that early in my career, um, I was successful with grants um, in one way and then totally not successful in another way. And, and it took me a long time to realize um, that difference, that difference between how you communicate and, and how you put forth the information to build that engagement. So a big part of that is figuring out if your organization is even ready for this. And so I, I love that you've given us this like entire umbrella where we need to stand under and look at first, but what are some of the other things to know if we're even gonna be good candidates? Yeah, so we actually offer a service called the Government Grants Readiness Assessment because nonprofits were asking us this exact thing. And so what we do, it's different for everybody, but um, we look at making sure you have the organizational infrastructure in place to take on a government grant. Um, you know, $2.5 million sounds lovely over the next five years. And I know nonprofits could think of ways to spend that. But, you know, in order to be ready to apply for that, in some cases, your organization has to be around for a certain number of years. Mm -hmm. So um, I love a good startup that thinks they're going to get government grants um, right away. That's like step number five on your fundraising journey. Um, and then government grants are a lot more complicated than foundation grants, um, but they're a lot larger. So sometimes if you put the work in, you will figure out what you can get and what you can't get. Um, the government likes to fund things that are going to get results or that you're going to meet metrics. So if your organization has not invested anything in program evaluation, you're gonna have a hard time keeping up. 
Um, the other thing is um, a lot of government grants are reimbursement based, and this is what rules a lot of people out. You know, if you get a $2.5 million grant as a $200,000 a year nonprofit, you're not going to have the capital to cover things. So my piece of advice, you know, during the government grants rate assessment, we see what type of money do you have? Is it unrestricted money? You know, what's your cash flow look like? Uh, how many months of liquidity do you have? Because um, if you have to wait 60 to 90 days for a payment, you, you can't do that. Uh, you can't pay your mortgage with your mission. Uh, and so you, you got to be careful. Uh, and then um, what we always recommend is that clients look at getting a line of credit. Um, and you can get a line of credit from pretty much any bank. But, you know, whoever your nonprofit's banking with, checking with a line of credit. Generally speaking, it's not something you have to pay for. Um, or if you do, it's like maybe $200 a year. But my uh, good banker friend said, banks don't give you a line of credit when you need it. Uh, they give it to you when you don't need it. That's uh, so when you're applying for these government grants, I always say, do you have a line of credit? They're like, no. I'm like, great, get one today. Whether you use it or not, you want to have that in your back pocket because who knows what's going to happen. Uh, and you might need to pay payroll in between two little reimbursements or two grants getting uh, you know, hit in the bank. And having that line of credit can really almost make or break an organization. So it's good for anyone to have. Colton, let me ask you this question. You brought something about up about the reimbursement um, piece of this. What is what are you seeing in terms of government reimbursement time? Is it is it running, you know, to the 120 days or is it really back more to the 60 to 90? What is that looking like? I think it's 60 to 90 at the most um, if you're on top of it. Um, okay. <laughs> I've heard of organizations that are multi months behind. Yeah. I heard of one recently that's like four years behind on their billing. So yeah, I can't, whatever. Uh, so <laughs> like, I'm like, I can't help you at this point. You're too far in the arrears. Um, but you know, you're looking at 60 to 90 days. I think that's an average plan. Um, but you know, being on top of like making sure your accounting's really good making sure, especially if you're getting paid like per client served, that you have all that data. Because if you don't have the data collected, like the pre and post or whatever you're supposed to collect, you're not going to get paid. And so I'm not going to say you did that work for nothing, but uh, you did that work for free. Uh, and so you know, you're not going to get paid for it. Um, so just being mindful of, you know, uh, having someone in your organization that can keep track of things. I don't recommend using spreadsheets to keep track of this stuff, but Hey, you got to start somewhere and it's better than a tally sheet. So, you know, uh, <laughs> just keeping track of what you're doing and how you're doing it and making sure you're billing for um, the full extent that you can bill for. Yeah. You know, I think they're very tedious. I think they're tedious to write and then they're tedious to manage. And that management piece is really what we're talking about at this current moment is, you know, many, most probably are reimbursement and you have to track and you have to track your receipts, right? The money, but you also have to track those measurements as you were just sharing Colton. And that is a big piece. And one thing that I've witnessed over the last three years is a lot of turnover with a lot of different staff. And so really seeing some uh, discrepancy, right? Between tracking, whether it's the money or the data piece, um, any benefit, and any um, suggestions on how we can maintain consistency so we don't become an organization four years behind and pick up the phone and say, I think I need Colton. Like, how do we prevent some of this? So I think part of it's just getting a good process and procedure in place. Um, a lot of larger organizations that have multiple grants have, um, you know, they have a data analyst or they have an yeah, internal program evaluator. Um, who's separate from your private foundation, community foundation grant writer. Um, so they're really more, you know, government grants is really more of a data nerd thing uh, rather than a um, regular fundraiser, whatever that means. Uh, so a generalized fundraiser. Um, so it's really having someone that can keep on track of those things and then keeping a process and procedure like on this date, we report this. On that date, we report that. And then it just kind of becomes um, a habit. You know, if you have a bunch of people that are new to an organization, you know, having maybe like a consultant come in and help you understand like, okay, this is the requirements of this grant. Are you following that? Or if you have an auditor, you know, having them come in and educate you on like, okay, this is this, this is that um, is really, you know, 
it might be the most boring two hour training you've ever been in, but um, it's also going to make sure that uh, you can keep your job. Uh, so <laughs> it's a meeting worth attending. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we have to make sure those I's are dotted, the T's are crossed. And I could even foresee where, you know, a new staff member comes in, that's part of their onboarding. You know, they need to really understand the funding and what they're required to do as it pertains to their, you know, uh, position and what they're responsible for. So thank you for answering that. Let's move into, because I'm sure we have some viewers and listeners saying, okay, how and where do I find these extremely lucrative government grants? So where do we even start? Well, so that's the million dollar literally question. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, the normal place to start, if you're looking for federal funding, it's all on grants.gov. Mm -hmm. um, you know, except grants.gov will start to link out to other places, but it's a good search place. If you don't have a grants.gov grants account, you know, sign up for one. You can subscribe to get um, updates and alerts. You know, I get them all the time. And if they come through and, you know, it's just kind of the title, a little description. I'm like, ooh, so-and-so might like this. And I'll just forward it to them and say, hey, here you go. Um, but, you know, you can follow whatever your issue area is to get updates. Uh, if you're looking for state and uh, sort of county and local grants, uh, some states are better organized than others, um, and you have to go to like the grants and contracting office or the procurement office or different things on some states, and they'll put them all there. Other states will make you go to each agency. So what we do with like our grants rate assessment is we figure out, well, what do you do as an organization and who actually might be interested in funding that? Is it health and human services? Is it the department of education? And then we identify all those different areas of which the mission fits. And then we figure out, okay, now where do they post all their grants? Mm -hmm. um, sometimes there's a um, subscribe list and you can get updated. Sometimes you just have to put a little tickle on your calendar to go check the first of the month to see what's available. So um, it sometimes is a hunt and gather um, type of thing. And you know, generally counties and cities are a little better about putting everything in the same place. Okay. Um, state agencies are not, um, you know, there's like softwares out there that say they do the searching for you. Um, you know, they kind of do, they kind of don't. Um, they sort of pull in all random types of things. And so I just think it's better to have um, them just bookmarked and then just kind of flip through whether it's you know, once a month, every two weeks, whatever, you know, and subscribe to the ones you can subscribe to. And if you have to comb through the other ones by hand, you know, every couple of weeks, then, you know, that's uh, that's just the, the price you pay when you have to work with the government. Uh, they still use fax machines, so we can't yes. expect them all to have an email list. So a what? They use a what machine? Yeah. <laughs> Your advice. Uh, I've only used like three times in my life. <laughs> so. Right. <laughs> you know, Colton, when I hear you describing this, it makes me think, and, and this is kind of like the reverse psychology of it, but if it's that challenging to do, it means that maybe there's more opportunity because how many people are going to be disciplined enough and structured enough to really manage this in, in this discovery way? And so, you know, um, not only is it incumbent upon us to set up some of these tracking systems and, and really make sure that we're actively engaged in the process. But I got to believe as hard as we have to work in the nonprofit sector, this is just not getting done. In many cases, I think people avoid government grants because they're like, oh, it's complicated. Yeah. Like it is, um, you know, but it's not rocket science. But, mm -hmm. you know, if you've never flown a rocket, then it is rocket science. So, you know, for a lot of folks who are like, ooh, government grants. No, there's a lot of instructions for that. I'm like, there is, um, you know, but once you kind of get through that, the information they're asking for isn't that complicated. You know, they want to know who you're serving, how you're serving them, how you're going to track it. Um, how do you know what you do um, achieves results? Like, what's the data or the literature that's backing up, you know, whatever. I, they want you to write a strong needs statement um, that includes data. And so in essence, it's things that any good nonprofit should be able to do. Um, but, you know, government grants take between 80 to 120 hours to write. Um, and so, you know, if you're looking at it from that perspective, then yes, it's a huge time suck. But, you know, if you get the, you know, 2.5 million, you're like, okay, that was worth 100 hours. 
uh, you know, the ROI is good on that. Um, but the benefit, you know, uh, government grants is if you don't get the grant, um, they also give you some really good feedback oftentimes and they give you a score. The best tip I have for writing a government grant is to write to the test. Uh, the government grants have a rubric in there and they give you a rubric for a reason. They're like, this is what we're looking for. Like, if anything you include in there does not earn you a bonus point, chuck it out. You have about 10 pages to answer 300 questions. And so make it easy on the reviewer section by section, like make it hard for them not to give you a point. You know, they're like, ah, oh, dang, they have everything in here. Um, Cause I've scored government grants. I'm not reading it for like, oh, this is so cute. I'm like, I have 10 points to give. Do they earn the 10 points? Oh, this is a lovely answer. Zero. They didn't answer the question. Uh, and that happens all the time. They're like, let me tell you why you should love me. And I'm like, no, I'm here for points, not for love. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you get zero because you told me a nice story. If I were on a community foundation grant review committee, I'd be like, oh, that's lovely. They should get the money. Um, right. on government, it's like, mm, you didn't answer the question next. <laughs> Very so. different. Yeah. And I highly recommend engaging with a specialist, especially if you've not ever submitted, you know, a government grant, the nuances are extremely different as Colton's been sharing. And I think it's well worth, you know, the time and the money, money invested, uh, for this, because, you know, every time I've been a part of a government grant submission, it is a project management endeavor, right? And there's typically been one person who's in charge of, of, you know, making sure it gets across the finish line. Doesn't mean that they are responsible for dotting all the I's and crossing all the T's, but they parse out these different sections. They pull it all together. They do make sure that everyone dotted their own I's and T's, right? But it's a huge, again, as I say, tedious, like it's a big project to manage. And as you said, I mean, it's, multiple pages, multiple questions, but it often comes with multiple zeros at the end of a number. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love it. You know, you've given us some really great advice and I, I'm really, I'm just, I'm fascinated by the, this lens with which you work Colton, when we're thinking about this for our own nonprofits, and maybe we haven't really gone down this path before, Talk to us about what we need to apply. I'm a, I am love the idea of starting before you do anything with an assessment. Mm -hmm. I think that's just genius because that's going to save everyone a lot of anxiety and heartbreak, it seems like. But what are some of the other things that we really should be looking at? So some of the things that I look for, and you're right, like doing an assessment to begin, like are, are we even ready is going to save you so much time and and it can also help you fix what's wrong um, or what you don't have before the next grant comes around because government grants are usually out for about 45 to 60 days if you're lucky. Uh, so when it hits the books, you got to hit the ground. So I always say readiness is half the battle. Um, but the things that you need are, you know, like you need an organizational chart. The number of nonprofits I know that don't have one is extreme. Uh, and so get an org chart. Um, you also need to have an evaluation plan. Like, how do you evaluate your programs? And can you put that into like writing in a paragraph or so? Um, you know, the whole we count the number of people that show up stuff isn't going to work here. Um, specifically for like, you know, larger types of grants, you know, the more zeros, the more evaluation they want you to do. And in many cases, they want you to budget like 10% towards evaluation, um, which is a great learning opportunity for your organization. But when you write the application, you need to have that plan in place ahead of time. Um, and then also, you know, really thinking about what's the next couple of years going to look like for this program. Um, because once you sign a contract with the government, that is a contract. Uh, and so I'm working with a nonprofit right now where one of their subcontractors decided we're going to do something different. And we're like, no, you're not. Uh, so <laughs> you're either not going to do anything or you're going to have to do this if you want paid. So, you know, everything you do that you change or want to change needs to go through a permission acceptance process. And the thing that they want to do different is vastly different. Uh, so it's just important to be aware that like when you're making a commitment for three years, you know, you're making, you're making a commitment. Um, so just kind of being aware of what the future looks like. And then also having all your finances together, you know, making sure your bookkeeping's caught up. Um, and then also making sure that your financial statements are actually nonprofit financial statements, not for profit. 
there's a difference. Um, and so, you know, there's all those little documents in place can help you like, you know, the attachments can be like where you spend most of your time and it shouldn't be. You should have all those ready. You know, the resumes of your staff, the organizational chart, the, you know, the financial stuff. So then it's just like, oh yeah, we got that. Beep. You know, that's the easy part then, not the, where, where do we have this, you know, kind of thing. Or have to recreate it. So you mentioned the the readiness. Is that on your website? I'm curious. Um, Yes, uh, <laughs> somewhere we're switching websites. So, okay. You know, it's something that we offer. It, it actually is on our website. It's a little hidden, mm-hmm. um, but uh, it's on our fundraising and philanthropy page under services. And so folks can check that out um, or they can just send us an email and we're happy to share some additional information about, you know, sort of our readiness assessment. And um, it takes a couple of weeks to do, you know, we kind of send you on a scavenger hunt to make sure you're ready and you know, if, if you find the scavenger hunts taking too long, then it might not be ready to do a government grant. So yeah. that's why we have that little component in there too. If you're scrambling to find basic documents, it's like, you're not quite ready yet. You're not ready. Yeah. I, I love it. I But I think the brilliance of this, I mean, Jared, it, it, you and I talked about this, is understanding if this is even a path you want to go down. That's right. As opposed to getting in the middle of it and then just finding it's a disaster. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and as I mentioned in the green room chatter, right? Like once you spend, I I believe the threshold Colton is 750,000. Um, is it spend or receive? I'm not, I'm not sure which. I think it's receive. Um, then you have to do a single file audit and that's above and beyond your annual audit. And that in and of itself, you know, has a different price tag to it. And so if that's not even, you know, part of your budget, like these are the things to consider. Um, Similarly, I was working with another client, Colton, and, you know, they were talking about their budget and I was like, okay, well, I know you've received a million dollars in government, but there's no line item here for your audit. (laughs) They're like, oh, we didn't know about that. And so just like knowing it's not just applying for these grants, it's that managing, it's the reporting and the compliance, right? That compliance is a big piece of that. Um, let's bring up Colton's contact because I want everyone uh, to know how to reach Colton Strasser as well as um, his lovely team at coltonstrasser.com. Um, also active on LinkedIn, which I appreciate so much. And uh, yeah, there, there's a lot going on. Colton, you work across the nation. Is that right? I know you live in Texas, but yeah, no, I'm I'm here, there, and everywhere. Have that. Okay. Yeah, I I really appreciate that. And again, you know, shameless plug here for Colton, his team, and others that you know, if you are looking to take on this endeavor, and this is a new endeavor for you, you don't have to do this alone. You can absolutely have an expert on your team, and in fact, leading the charge of this to make sure that you're pulling everything and you're getting points, not love, on your on your rubrics, right? That's what's important. Yeah. And if, uh, I'll just add another shameless plug. If folks sign up for our newsletter, we have an intro to government grants training uh, once a quarter. Uh, and so you can get some of the in-depth, you know, how to's and, you know, sometimes people attend the training like, yep, nope, don't want to do this myself. And other times they're like, I can give this a shot. So, you know, we're, we're happy to help people um, where they are. And um, sometimes we just review the grants too. So if they write it, we can review it and score it. You know, it's cheaper that way because we're not spending the time writing it, but um, I, I'm a tough grader, so you'll get good feedback. <laughs> so I love it. I think that is brilliant and, and what an, an amazing uh, collaboration to to do. Hey, Colton Strasser, CEO, Colton Strasser Consulting. Um, it's just been fabulous. I, I, I love your energy and I always love hearing what you have to say. Again, I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. I've been joined by the nonprofit nerd herself, Jarrett Ransom, CEO of the Raven Group. And again, we want to make sure that we extend our gratitude to all of our sponsors from Bloomerang to American Nonprofit Academy, your part time controller, nonprofit thought leader, Fundraising Academy at National University. Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Nerd, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. These are the folks that join us day in and day out, um, and it's just a, an amazing partnership that we have. It's really important to note, Jarrett, and I, I like—I don't say this enough, but you know, 
our sponsors don't control any of our editorial decisions. Um, so we meet and talk with people that sometimes are direct competitors of theirs, um, that might have uh, different opinions. Um, and so it's really powerful that these people trust us to navigate now nearly 800 episodes of the nonprofit show. Okay. Colton Strasser, hey, you're a rock star. Go out there and get more money for our sector, my friend. Well, yeah. thanks for having me. I appreciate you. Thanks, Colton. It's been a lot of fun. Hey, everybody, as we like to end every episode of the nonprofit show, we like to remind ourselves, our viewers, our listeners, our guests to stay well so you can do well. We'll see you back here tomorrow, everyone. Mm -hmm.